rejuvenating a dead battery. Now this is something I've always wanted to try but never got around to it. But before I do that, a couple of disclaimers, right? First, if you're going to attempt this, don't do it indoors. This is not the place to do it. The unfortunate reality of YouTube is that we can't work with the doors open because people are always walking in and, you know, so we have to work with the doors closed. We have to work inside. Don't do that. Do this outside in the backyard or wherever it is that, you know, you're, you're at in the open spaces. And why do you do that? Because batteries can explode. Now, when a battery explodes, it doesn't, it's not a, a flaming like that. I've had a couple of these things blow up on my face over the years, so I know what to expect. Always wear something over your eyes. Always keep water, and especially you're going to use distilled water on this thing, and we'll get to that in a minute. So there should always be a water source so that if this thing does go poof like that, you can flush your face real quick and then get to a bathroom and really wash it. So those are your basic disclaimers on this. Do this outside. You know, to do, don't do as I do. do. Don't do as I Whatever it is. Okay. So, rejuvenating a dead battery. Now, batteries go bad a couple of different ways. You can have an internal break um, where, where the, the connections between the plates is, are disturbed and, or the connection between the plates and the post are disturbed, and there's nothing you can do to bring a battery like that back. And then there's batteries that go bad. They die of natural causes, and it's a process called sulfation. So what happens is, as the battery goes through its life, and especially as they sit, the plates start to get crusted over. Uh, that prevents the acid from reacting with the lead, and slowly but surely the battery just goes and goes and goes. So there's a few different methods of rejuvenating a battery, and the one that fascinates me the most, and the one that I understand is used by battery reconditioners, is this. What they do is they take a dead battery and they deliberately overcharge it in cycles. So it's, it's completely different than if you take a 12-volt battery charger and you stick it on there and you, it can sit for the end of time, but if the plates are sulfated, it won't do anything. But if you use a stick welder and feed it amperage slowly until you can get the, the, the plates or until you get the acid boiling, evidently that's enough to repel enough of the crust off the plates that the acid can then get back to it and renew it. So this battery right here has been sitting, so I picked this one in particular because this has been sitting on the side of my house years. Out in the elements, you can see it's covered with spider webs and, and, and tree leavings and stuff like that. So this was, this was beyond dead when I parked it and now, you know, it's super, super, super dead. So we're gonna to try to revive this thing. So the very first thing you wanna do is make sure that it's full of water, right? Now, distilled water. You gotta use distilled water. You can't use like, um, you can't use uh, uh, purified water or, you know, bottled water, tap water. It has to be distilled water. Why? For science reasons. Okay, trust me on this. Just use distilled water. All right. So one of the things you have to know also is that if you look in there and you see the water level is low, keep in mind that the acid doesn't evaporate. The water does. So it could be just that much at the bottom of the cell, but it's going to be a pure acid. It's going to be concentrated. So by adding the distilled water, all you're doing is bringing it back to its original spec. You can empty this out and throw fresh acid in it. And that's not a bad idea. But for the sake of this experiment, I want to go with what's in there, adding distilled water, and then zapping it in cycles with the stick welder and see what happens. So let's pop this open here. Any supermarket, you can get distilled water. And uh, let's top this thing off. Okay. So when you add water, you want to bring it just to the bottom, just to the bottom of the case. Okay. 
I'm making a bit of a mess. I probably should have used a small funnel. Okay, that's topped off. Let's wipe the top of this thing clean. Okay, so I'll come here and you can see how high the water level is. A couple of them I actually went higher than I should have, like that one's a little high. They so said they're about even. So this process entails, I've never done this before, I've never practiced this before. This is the first time we're doing this. So we're gonna hook up the ground to the ground, to the negative, okay? And then I got a piece of threaded rod to make a positive connection and a vice grip. Okay. So I'm gonna turn this thing on. I'm gonna turn I'm gonna turn it all the way down. Okay, so alright. She's on. And I'm gonna bring the amperage up now until I start to see some bubbling. And I see bubbling already. I'm at um I'm at 50 amps. Right now it's, it's set at 50 amps. And come here, you can see that this, this cell here is just starting to bubble. And this one's starting to bubble. So I'm going to leave this at 50 amps for right now and wait until all of them are bubbling. Now I'm assuming that all of these cells are going to be, you know, uh, active. That there aren't any broken plates inside. And now I'm seeing bubbling in all six. So I guess that's a good sign. It means that internally the battery is, is, is all of the connections are intact. So from what I understand about this method, is that you're supposed to boil it, boil it until the bubbles are actually coming over the top of the battery for about five minutes and then you stop and let everything cool down and settle then after it cools down and settles you go back and you do it again so I've got I've got minor bubbling in all of the cells right now and we got some, you see the steam coming off of there? That's the gases you gotta watch out for. Those are highly flammable gases. I would strongly recommend that you turn the welder off before you disturb any of these connections because the spark could cause this thing to, to go. All right, I got bubbling across the board. I'm at 50 amps. I'm gonna bring it up a little bit. Okay, I'm at 85 now. And we've got we got gases coming. Oh, okay, this that one's overflowing. I may have overdone it. I may have overfilled it. Okay, I'm coming back down again. All right, I'm back down to 50. Yeah, that's acid, so. Okay, here's something interesting. I'm looking at this one cell that I overfilled, I clearly overfilled it, and I see like a, 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 a cloudy, cloudy mix. And I imagine that's the stuff being blown off the plates, the sulfation being blown off the plates. So, you know, the bubbling stopped on these. Cap, okay, back off with the camera just a little bit. I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna go back to send on this and, and see what happens. Go back to the 85 amps.
Okay, and that's where I'm getting some real action. Now these, these gases that are coming off of here are relatively harmless. I mean, don't breathe them in, obviously. But they're relatively harmless unless there's an open flame or a spark. And, I, and it'll surprise you. All right, we got some. We got good bubbling now at 85, and I'm gonna bring this thing up to like 100. Okay, it's boiling good. We got good gas. I'm gonna step back from this thing, okay? And like I said, you always keep fresh water handy because if that pops, you get splashed with it, just dilute the acid with the water and you're fine. This is pretty cool. It's, I mean, it's, it's bubbling good. I should have I should have had a timer on this so that I would you know I'd know when five minutes was up. <laughs> I'm gonna I'm gonna up it to 120 amps and then step back. Yeah? Okay. So far, so good. It's bubbling hard. And you can see the, the gas is coming off of it. And I repeat, do not do this indoors. Don't do this. This is a bad thing to do. All right. That's probably close to about five minutes now. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to, I'm going to drop the amperage and turn this thing off. And then, okay. So okay, you can come back over here now. Hey, it's still bubbling. I don't know if that's a good sign or what. But uh and remember now, even though you poured water in, what bubbled out has got acid in it. So we wanna try to minimize our exposure of our skin to the acid. So We'll put those in a plastic bag and dispose of them. Um, so just out of curiosity now, that was one dose. Let's hook up a load tester to it and see what we get. Oh, okay, it's showing, showing we got 12... 12 and a half volts. Let's hit the load. Wow. Wow, that's pretty amazing. And I'm holding that for a while. I would I would expect this thing to have dove poof. Okay. That's impressive. That's impressive. Um, <laughs> it looks like this works. All right, let's take a break and let this thing cool down. And uh, we'll wait about 10 or 15 minutes and we'll give this thing another dose. All right, so cut it here. 
Okay, so she sat for about 15 minutes now, and we're gonna rehook everything back up. There's our ground. There's our positive. Okay, so now I'm gonna fire this thing back up. I'm gonna set it up at about 100 amps. And we're gonna let it percolate for five minutes again, and then we'll check it with the low tester and see what we got. Okay, that was five more minutes. I'm gonna shut this thing down here. Pour connections off. And we're gonna sit for another 10 minutes. Then I'm going to come back and give it another five minute zap. And that should be, I mean, we'll check out with the load tester at that point. All right, so that's our third lap with this thing. We brought it up to 140 amps, five minutes. So let's shut this thing down. That's boiling up nice. All right. So, let's throw a load tester on here and see what we got. So, I'm going to assume that this is finished. Now, this the battery is rated at 525 cold cranking amps. So, let's throw this sucker on here and see what we get. Okay. Oh, it's got a nice surface charge. Okay, and let's hit it. Okay, so this is showing this is showing over 600 amps on the load and it's not dropping. That's not bad at all. Okay. Nice. Okay. That's hot. I believe we have just rejuvenated a battery. All right, so, see? Now, I, I don't know if this is permanent. I don't know if it's fixed, fixed, you know, or, or revived, revived. I mean, it's showing, it's showing perfect reading on a load tester right now. But what will it look like, let's just say, in a week? So, I'm going to call this a tentative success. This is hot. It's really hot. I'm going to call this a tentative success. And I think what we're going to do is throw this in one of our cars and drive it around for a week. And we'll check it. We'll check it, let's say, next weekend and, and see what we got. But that's not bad. I mean, if, if it'll bring back a battery that's been sitting. This battery, it's, it's got a, it's got a, a January 19, uh, 2017 sticker on it. And like I said, it's been sitting on the side of my house for at least three years. Because I remember the car that it came out of. And it, it wouldn't start that car. It just kept going dead. Um, so I don't know the history of the battery before I got it. But like I said, it's sitting for at least three years. And it's holding beautiful on a load test. So let's see what happens with it. And I guess that's it for now. This, guys, if this works, let me tell you something. This is the ultimate side hustle. You know, get yourself a cheap stick welder and advertise that you recondition batteries. You can make some loot with that. All right. So that's it. I hope you got something out of that. I hope I got something out of that. I'll see you tomorrow.